In recent years, there has been increased emphasis on the need for businesses to consider the environmental impact of decisions that they make. Organisations are beginning to recognise that awareness of the environment is not optional, but instead is important for long-term survival and growth. Indeed, environmental management accounting has become increasingly topical. There are increased legal and regulatory requirements relating to environmental management. Financial penalties exist for non-compliance. Ethically, companies should be seen to be aware and care about how their activities, such as manufacturing for example, impact the environment. There is increased need to manage the risk and potential impact of environmental disasters. In order to maintain a positive public image and a strong brand, companies need to demonstrate effective environmental management. Environmental costs are becoming increasingly significant, thus impacting a company's financial performance. Hence, for all of these reasons, organisations are becoming more cognisant of the environment and how it can impact on the success of their business. Environmental costs can generally be split into two categories. Internal costs. This refers to costs that directly impact on the profit or loss account of the company. Examples include water disposal and waste disposal costs. Financial penalties or increased taxes paid due to poor environmental management record. Costs incurred in upgrading production processes to ensure compliance with regulations. Costs of securing a licence or permit which allows the company to give off a certain level of carbon emissions. Also external costs. These costs are not borne by the company, which is responsible for their origin, but instead the costs are imposed on society. Examples of such external costs can include carbon emissions, increased healthcare costs, possibly as a result of such carbon emissions, energy and water usage, deterioration of other natural resources such as wildlife or forests for example, social welfare costs. In recent times governments have been trying to transfer such costs to the companies responsible for generating them. In other words trying to convert external costs to internal costs. This is usually achieved by way of imposing financial penalties or increasing taxes. Increased carbon emissions from a company's manufacturing plant, for example, may result in a corresponding increase in tax payable by that company. Also, given the need for a company to be aware of the environmental impact of its activities and the related broader implications for that company, as we have been discussing above, some organisations are voluntarily converting external costs to internal costs. Organisations are frequently unaware of the extent or types of environmental costs within their business. As a result they struggle to properly account for environmental costs and to implement effective cost saving programmes. Some appropriate management accounting techniques have been put forward to identify, measure and reduce environmental costs. Remember to do so provides mutual benefit to both the company and the environment. Let's examine some of these techniques. Input-output analysis. The logic here is that all inputs to a process must be traced to outputs. This approach forces an organisation to consider all outputs from a process regardless of whether they result in a finished unit of production, scrap item that can be disposed of, wastage or other. Thus any waste or pollution can be tracked on both a physical and a cost basis. For example, say 100 kilograms of materials have been purchased and input into the production process. At the end of the production process there are 90 kilograms of output or production. Hence the 10 kilograms lost during production must be accounted for in some way. Perhaps 4 kilograms of this has been sold as scrap 6 kilograms is classified as waste. By assessing the outputs in terms of both physical quantities and related monetary terms, the company is forced to focus on the environmental cost. Flow cost accounting. 
Flow cost accounting monitors the flow of material through a business in three categories of its organizational structure. The purchase of material, the production system and delivery to the customer, and disposal of waste. Flow cost accounting highlights material flows by examining the physical quantities involved, their costs and their value at each stage of the organization. Flow cost accounting aims to reduce the quantity of material at each stage. Not only should this reduce the company's carbon footprint, which will have a positive effect on the environment, but it should also reduce the company's costs over the long term. Activity-based costing. By identifying cost drivers, activity-based costing helps us to understand how costs arise, and so the company can focus on reducing these costs. Thus, activity-based costing principles can be used to identify drivers for environmental costs. This would involve a detailed analysis of the business processes. If, for example, it could be ascertained that the number of production runs was the dominant cost driver of a company's electrical costs, then the company could focus on reducing that number of production runs, thus reducing the electrical or environmental cost. Life cycle costing. Life cycle costing considers all costs over the life of a product. Pre-production, production, post-production. Post -production. Hence, by using life cycle costing, a cost incurred by the company can be more easily identified. Once identified, management can then focus on reducing such costs. Environmental costs can be identified and measured at each stage of the product's life cycle, from the design stage right through to its obsolescence. Key features of a company's environmental management accounting system might include some of the following. Ensure regulatory compliance. This might include monitoring waste levels to ensure they are not exceeded or ensuring staff receive a standard level of training. A company may carry out internal audits to ensure it is compliant. The company should have an online environmental policy statement. The company's public relations department might have a defined set of environmental procedures. Realistic targets should be set to reduce carbon emissions and related environmental costs. Such targets should be part of a larger performance appraisal process. Budgeted environmental cost reduction targets should be compared to actual results. If targets are not met, then corrective action should be considered.